So today I'm going to be tying a fly that's featured in this really excellent book on sea run cutthroat trout by Richard Stoll, who runs a fly fishing shop here in my hometown of Polesville, Washington. This is the fly right here, the P.O. Prawn. There's a good recipe in the book and you can buy these flies online, but I haven't seen any step-by-step -step instructions, so I'm going to show you the way that I like to tie it. So in the vise I have a Gamakatsu SS15 size 8 uh, which is the hook in the original recipe. The hook in the book illustration though and also in the flies that they sell commercially is a forged hook. Uh, I'm thinking it's probably a Tiemco 911 or 911S so the equivalent size for that would be a size 6 uh, and I'm going to list all the materials at the end of the video. The thread I'm using here is a 6 aught pink uni thread and I'm laying down a thread base to the start of the bend, uh, just right around there. Uh, so trim off the excess, then I'm going to wrap it back to about oh, two thirds of the distance back to the eye of the hook, just as if you were tying on a clouser minnow. And next, I'm going to tie in the eye, uh, which is a 532nd inch nickel eye with a red iris and a black pupil. The recipe calls for Spirit River Real Eyes Plus, and I think what I've got here is actually one of Hairline's pseudo eyes. So I like to take several tight wraps uh, from back to front, diagonally, in each direction, before I start to do any figure of eight wraps. Uh, I think this makes for a really solid tie-in. So back to front, left side, right side, crossing over beneath the, hank, the shank of the hook. And then I'm going to check everything looks squared up. That looks good. Uh, so now I'm going to do a whole bunch of figure eight wraps. If you've tied uh, any number of Clouser type flies, you know how this works. Tying those in, get lots of thread in there. Then I'm going to take uh, some helicopter turns around between the eyes and the top of the hook shank. And this really tightens up all of those earlier wraps that you make uh, and it ensures a good solid base. Okay, just a few more wraps there. Then I'm going to add a few drops of a gel type super glue right into that thread just to make sure everything is really locked in place, top and bottom, like so. Okay, that's good. So the body of the fly is going to be pink holographic tinsel, and I am just going to cut myself off about a five inch length here. And I'm going to tie in the tinsel right behind the eyes and wrap it along the top of the hook shank. So the name of this fly, by the way, P.O. Prawn, I'm pretty sure that's for the name of Richard Stoll's shop here in Polesburg called Peninsula Outfitters, P.O. I can't think of another reason why it has that name. Right, now I'm gonna clip that tinsel out of the way for now. Back in my material holder, and I should show you what I'm using, I guess. It is Vivas medium pink holographic tinsel. So now the tail of the fly is marabou and the recipe calls for apricot or apricot as we Brits like to call it. Here it is and that is, that is very similar to what's in the illustration. So your marabou should be quite sparse, not, not a big flamboyant clump and you want to use the tips of it rather than the webby filaments near the base of the quills. So I'm going to add in five strands of pink crystal flash. Just mix it in among the mar marabou fibers. That's the stuff. So there we go, that's the tail all ready to tie in. And I'm going to make it approximately the same length as the hook, or the shank of the hook. It's about, it's about it there. So I'm going to pinch wrap that tail pretty loosely along the top of the hook shank, taking it up just behind the eyes, and then 
trim off the excess. Like that. that. Then you can tidy it up as you work your way back down to the tie-in point. Okay, good. Now I'm going to add some legs, and these are the shrimp pink, shrimp pink crazy legs, and you just need one of those cut in half. And I'm going to position the legs along the underside of the fly uh, so that one leg dangles down each side of the hook bend and when you're finished they, they should they should extend just a little bit beyond the tips of the marabou uh, this is a kind of a difficult material to work with I find I'm just going to do the best I can get it in position before I start to wrap it on there you go it really has a mind of its own. That's nearly, nearly done. Okay, one more wrap. And then snip that off. Okay. Now go back and grab your tinsel and make sure that you don't trap anything. So make a single turn around the tie-in point and then wrap in overlapping turns all the way back to just just behind the eyes. That's it. And then trap the tinsel with a few tight turns front and back. Make sure it's locked in. And trim off the excess. Now it's time to add a little collar of mallard flank in hot pink. Now unfortunately I've used most of the good feathers in this package so I'm left with uh, slim pickings. Um, there's some good feathers in there, you know, there's long ones, there's some little tiny ones. Uh, so this isn't the best flank feather, but it's going to have to do. I've trimmed it to about the stem to about a quarter of an inch. Uh, and I'm going to tie in the feather by the stem with the shiny side towards me. And after taking a few turns, I like to bend the tip of that stem back on itself and then add a few more turns of thread just to lock it in place. So I'm going to attach a pair of hackle pliers to help me grip this at first just to make it a bit easier to wrap around. I'm going to attempt to make two or three turns uh, and stroke back those fibers as I go around. Like that. Uh, better with just fingers at this point. So I got I got like three turns in there. Okay. Uh, that's not not the prettiest in the world but we will be covering the front part of this with uh, with dubbing so not to worry that's okay now we're going to create the head and for this I like to make a dubbing loop so I'm using one of those little brass dubbing spinners to throw a loop of probably, I don't know, 
seven inches across the thread and then you need to cross that to lock it in place and then jump the tying thread in front of the eyes and then it really makes sense at this point to put the thread in a holder and keep it away from all the spinning operation. So you need to apply a little bit of dubbing wax here. Okay, now it's going to look as if I'm adding a whole lot of dubbing, but that's mostly just the camera lights catching it. Really, it's basically a little pinch about the size of your thumbnail. Uh, and you need to spread that out the whole length of the loop. I should show you what I'm using here. It is uh, it's eye stub in shell pink. Okay. And you just spin away. Get a good spin until you kind of made a nice uh, tight chenille. This is the best bit of the whole operation. I like this. There it goes. Um, then you can remove your bobbin holder and just start to wind on the dubbing. So take about three or four turns behind the head before uh, making figure of eight loops between the eyes, all around there. Uh, just fill that space between the eyes. Keep everything as tight as you can. If you hold the bobbin, the, the dubbin spinner, it's not gonna unspin itself. Okay, maybe one more figure of eight around there. And then I'm going to take just one or two turns in front of the eyes, like that. And then trap the dubbing loop with, with my tying thread. Take some tight wraps over there. That's it. And You can snip off the excess. Like so. And then I'm going to just use my whip finish tool, put in a whip finish. that, snug everything up, cut the thread, now you could leave it just like this but I am, I like to trim off the more exuberant bits of dubbing from the head, yeah that's it, and uh, make sure that the eye is, is clear. So then all that remains is to just add a tiny drop of your favorite head cement or Sally Hansen's, whatever you like, to that whip finish knot. I like to use this Loon UV fly finish. Love the stuff. Give it, give it some rays. And that is it. The PO Prawn. It's a very effective saltwater fly and uh, it'll catch coho salmon as well as cutthroat trout. Don't forget to pinch off that barb. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and please let me know in the comments if you give this a try.